Hi everyone! So the reason why I'm starting this YouTube channel is because some of you might have already know I am a huge bookworm. I keep on posting about the books that I read on my Instagram and I feel that people are starting to get annoyed because you know all of us we don't share the same interests and every time I finish reading like a book I would fangirl and basically talk to myself on Instagram because I was no other platform I could you know use to talk about my emotions about a specific book so here I am the book that I will be reviewing today is the after series this series means a lot to me I literally could go on and on talking about how much I love it and I think I think most of my friends are probably annoyed because I talk about it so much because of the series I have met tons of people from all over the world and we come together and we talk about after one of the things that I love about this fandom is that all of us are kind of into the same genre of books so we would recommend each other new books hence why like since the last three months or so I have read over 50 books because as all of them keep on recommending me new books so I'm just really trying to finish everything because I want to keep myself updated with you know what the fandom is um, talking about yeah so yeah let's get started before i get distracted so the series has a total of five books after i don't have the original cover i only have the movie tie-in edition so after then we have after we collided and we have the third novel which is after we fell this is the thickest book that i have ever owned because look at how thick it is it is and we have After I Be Happy. After I Be Happy is the ever out novel of all the books. But we have a spin off novel which is called Before. I don't have a copy of the book unfortunately because I read it online. Yeah, I only have this four. Anna Todd started writing the series on Wattpad and that's how I stumbled upon her books and I instantly fell in love with them. I read them like a few years back but when I heard that it's gonna be made into a movie I was like oh my god I read this book like years ago and it's gonna you know come into life. Yeah. And I thought her writing is beautiful. Like the way that she puts like really deep quotes inside the series makes me Wow, I was completely mesmerized by them. You know when you read a book and when there's this certain quote that just really hits you? Yeah, I felt it like a lot of times while reading the series. Her power is immaculate, like literally. This series is about a girl named Tessa Young. She's your typical good girl. She studies, she doesn't drink, she doesn't swear, has good grades. And she's in her first year of college when she met her dormmate, Steph. So Steph is the opposite of Tessa. She's not like Tessa at all. She has tattoos, she drinks, she smokes, she goes to parties. They're friends. I'm not gonna say anything else. They're friends. And Steph is friends with this guy named Hardin Scott. So Hardin Scott is Tessa's love interest in the whole series. And yeah. It's about their relationship. So Hardin is exactly like Steph. He's the bad boy of the um, story. He has tattoos, he drinks, he sleeps around, he goes to parties, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's about Tessa and Hardin's love life. Their relationship is nothing like the typical romance novels that you read, no. They went through a lot together. I love how they overcome the struggle and manage to stick with each other throughout like everything that has happened. I've heard and read a lot of negative reviews regarding this series saying how toxic the relationship was but please just finish the entire series because you wouldn't regret it because in you know, the epilogue novel everything will make sense. Character development is really important because if you don't finish the whole series how are you supposed to know like what changes in a person you know what I mean but personally I don't think that it is a toxic relationship because you know they have their ups and downs and yeah this book has a lot of ups and downs I guess there is no such thing as a perfect relationship Tessa is not perfect Hardin is not perfect nobody's perfect but the fact that they change for each other and yeah for me they just went through a lot of stuff together um, especially because both of them had this really messed up kind of past both of them just you know 
tries to help each other keep the dark past i have no idea how to explain it but yeah their relationship is kind of like a back and forth kind of thing they can be all lovey-dovey sappy in one moment and they can be fighting like cats and dogs in the next i can't emphasize on how many times i you know threw my books across my room because of how frustrated I am with them. One moment it's all like, Tessa, no, you're not supposed to do that. But like, in one moment it's all hard and like, why? You know, it's just frustrating. The thing that I love about this book is because you can see their character development. And you can see how Tessa, she came out from her shell in the first book. She's that shy, timid girl, but throughout the series, you can see how confident she gets. It shows how strong she is, and I love that. Tessa and Harden, the way that they are just so different, but the way that they complement each other is just really perfect. Like, Tessa for life, like, you know what I mean? The thing that I love about Harden is that he truly loves Tessa but he doesn't know how to show it. The way that he shows his love for Tessa is unhealthy. Like, you know, the typical, you know, protective jealousy type. Okay, maybe that's his way to show his love for Tessa. I mean, you do you, I guess. But, I mean, if I were to put myself in Tessa's shoes, I could understand how frustrated she would be because I am not the girl who would tolerate, you know, guys to be possessive towards me. Like, I am not an object. I am not... The first book is only in Tessa's point of view, but in the rest of the book, it's in both Tessa and Hardin's point of view. So like I said, they are polar opposites. So when you read the series, it's actually really funny because you get to be in Hardin's head and you get to be in Tessa's head. Mind? Head? I don't know. But yeah, you get what I mean? And it's really funny because in Tessa's point of view, she's really clean. She's, yeah, like I said, she's like the nice girl, you know what I mean? But in Hardin's point of view, I don't have enough fingers to count how many times he swore because it's just too much. You know, you get to be inside his mind. And I'm a girl and I'll be like, oh, this is what, you know, guys think of things. <laughs> Which is really, it's really cool. The other thing that I love about this series is that it doesn't necessarily just focus on her relationship, but it focuses on, you know, friendship, on family relationships. So I love how they focus on other aspects as well and not only on, you know, love life. So that's good. So the first book has already been made into a movie, but the movie was not it. Except for the amazing chemistry that Hero and Josephine have. So. You can ask literally anyone from the fandom. The first movie was nothing like the book. We don't claim the first movie. <laughs> I am so disappointed about the first movie. When I watched the movie, I was like, no way, that was nothing like the book. A lot of us were upset about it, but I hope the second movie will make up for it. I've read a lot of negative reviews about the movie, saying that you know, they don't want to read the series because of how bad the movie turned out to be, which I completely understand because if I were to watch the movie before reading the books, I would say the same thing. The second movie, however, has already been made. They have posted like a few clips. And the teaser trailer is already out. It is exactly how I imagine it would be. I'm just hoping that the storyline of the second movie will actually stick to the book unlike the first movie. Because the first movie, like I said, we don't claim her. I don't know who she is. We don't know the release date yet. I think because of COVID-19 issue, I think everything will be pushed back. So everything is just, you know, delayed with the cinemas, you know, closed. I, I just think that we have to be a little bit more patient about it. If you're the person who loves to read romance, young adult novels, then I highly suggest you reading the series. As I said, this book is a romance young adult novel. So I should warn you that if you're not comfortable with reading, the scenes if you know what i mean then i suggest you skip the series because the series has a lot of the scenes i hope you'll enjoy reading the series as much as i did i'm currently rereading after and at the same time i'm also rereading after we fell i'm struggling because i'm i'm currently rereading like probably five or six books at the same time which i don't recommend please don't do that because you will suffer like i am right now so recommend me more books if you want me to talk about them and I will do so eventually. I hope I did a 
decent job because as I said this is my first time doing these kind of things and I am not perfect so if you haven't already go follow my book and fan account on Twitter I basically just fangle about after and I talk about the books that I read I leave my username down in the description box I guess that's why you call it because I don't know I'm still trying to figure things out <laughs> Before I end this video, I would like to take the opportunity to address something really important As most of you already know or might have already been a victim or witness of such things Racism, xenophobia, police brutality and discrimination still exist in 2020 It is extremely important that regardless of your skin colour, beliefs, sexual orientation, gender, age or nationality, you speak up even if you are one of those people who think that this is not your battle to fight because it doesn't concern you directly, think about it. Is your country free from racists? Has your country not been involved in slave trade and institutionalized slavery back in the day? If not, can you try to at least be a decent human being that feels empathy towards these people who are suffering from these kind of things? Towards those who wake up every single day feeling scared because they might get killed just because of their skin colour? Those who have to explain to their kids how to act every time they encounter a police officer? Are you a decent human being if you think that people are getting murdered by those who swore to protect them is not enough to riot and fight for change? If you're not black, you will never understand how they are feeling right now. I'm not black and I don't understand how exactly they are feeling but I stand for them. We should understand that they need our help to win this battle that they have been fighting for since centuries ago. So use your privilege. Please don't stay silent. Educate yourself and others around you. Sign as many petitions as you can. Donate if you are able to. Join a protest if there is one happening nearby. Share as many useful and reliable information as much as you can. Every single gesture counts and makes the movement gain force, creating the groundwork for change. And please remember, asking for justice by saying Black Lives Matter doesn't mean yours doesn't. It just means that Black Lives Matter as much as yours do. So yes, all lives matter. but. All lives don't matter until black lives do. I have put up links to petitions in the description box down below and it will only take less than a minute for you to sign it. Remember, every little thing that you do counts. Feel free to add more links to petitions in the comment section down below and I would be delighted to sign them. So yeah, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that if all of us just come together and fight for change, it will happen. Thank you.